Hello Helldiver and welcome to another Helldivers 2 news video. Today we have only two things to talk about. Number one, we have a new major order which proves all of the story leaks true. And number two, we have a ridiculously huge patch with so many balance changes my head is still spinning. And listen, if you want to find out all about the newest leaks that came out, I'll drop a video about them tomorrow, simply because it's not humanly possible for me to do it today but they are huge and the story implications are incredible and all I can say is the Illuminate are coming very freaking soon. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel. Now let's go! Let's cover the Galactic War updates first because that's going to be the quickest part to go through. Number one, Operation Legitimate Undertaking Phase 1 has failed. The automatons in their calculated oppression and hardwired avarice have stymied our valiant efforts to liberate Juhi. The loss of the indispensable explosives on the planet will mean significant delays to the production of anti-tank mines. The explosive technicians on Chuhi have almost certainly been torn to pieces by the vicious blades of the automatons. All will agree that every possible resource was directed towards their salvation. Their sacrifice is hereby honored. Which basically means, as I told you in my last video, we are going to get the anti-tank mines. It just won't be as quick as we got the airburst rocket launcher. Next up, an emergency broadcast. Terminate outbreaks have erupted on all barrier planets. The bugs appear to be showing resistance to thermocide. On Meridia, terminate reproduction rates have exploded overnight. While the mechanism for this adaptation is unclear, it appears to be linked to the continued thermocide exposure. It cannot be allowed to spread. The Helldivers are ordered to deactivate the terminate control system on the remaining barrier planets immediately. So we will have to deactivate the TCS on Errata Prime, Fenrir 3 and Turing. We have 6 days to complete this, so I really do like our chances. If you've been one of my subscribers for a while, you will also notice that this is actually a point from the story leaks that was clearly laid out to us and this does mean that the Illuminate are coming very very soon. How soon? I'll discuss this in my next video which will probably come out tomorrow because today we have the huge patch to talk about. So without further ado, let's get right to it. For this patch we have made improvements and changes to the following areas. Balance changes to weapons, stratagems and enemies and change to the spread democracy mission. For balancing, in general, armors with armor rating above 100 now also reduce damage to headshots, and victory poses now only play for the extracted, no stolen valor on our ships. And I gotta admit, I'm sure a lot of people have not even realized this, but headshots are the thing that hurts us the most during missions, so this is a change I cannot believe we finally got to see happen and I'm super excited to get in the game and test it out for myself and I'm simply 100% sure that my favorite armor set which looks like a stormtrooper is now even more valuable because it's a medium armor but it has above 100 armor rating so we're about to find out how much better it got. So let's move on to the weapons, the CB9 exploding crossbow, it now has a slightly smaller explosion, it does increased stagger, decrease the number of maximum mags from 12 to 8, increased number of magazines received from resupply boxes from 6 to 8, slight reduction in ergonomics and the muzzle velocity has been increased. Honestly, I'm not sure what to think about these changes, at least reading them out loud it seems like a sort of a sideways buff perhaps, because it doesn't seem like a buff, it doesn't seem like a nerf, I'm kind of puzzled really. And you'll notice this is kind of a theme for this patch. I'm not a very big fan of it, but you'll see why as we get deeper in it. Next up, the one that hurts the most. The last 99 Quasar Cannon now has an increased recharge time of 5 seconds more, which makes the recharge time 15 seconds. That means you can shoot this thing at most 4 times per minute. If you ask me, this nerf was completely unnecessary and unwarranted, it's not going to make the game any more fun, but what do I know, I've only been playing games for like 25 years or something like that. Next up, the B14 Adjudicator, full auto is now the default fire mode. Reduced recoil, increased maximum max from 6 to 8, increased number of magazines received from resupply from 6 to 8 and now is placed amongst assault rifles. 
And these are changes I really enjoy because I am of the opinion that Arrowhead should actually buff a lot more than they nerf since they even promised we would get a bunch of buffs and honestly you see even further down the line it's mostly nerfs man. And these buffs to the adjudicator are not super strong so we'll see how it is but at least we got something for it. Next up the laser cannon slightly increased damage and slightly reduced damage versus large volume bodies. I have no idea what large volume bodies is supposed to mean i would presume that would be annihilator tanks and factory striders and bio titans but nerfing the damage that the laser cannon does towards them makes absolutely zero sense to me so i have no idea but at least we got a damage buff so yay us next up the sg8p punisher plasma decreased maximum max from 12 to 8 increased amount of magazines received from resupply from 6 to 8 increased projectile speed but will still keep a similar range decreased damage fall off on the explosion and now placed in the energy weapons category and this is another situation of buffing and nerfing and i have to be honest with you guys the decrease of max mags makes zero sense to me because the punisher plasma absolutely eats through your ammo and honestly even with the buff to the explosive damage radius i do not think this gun will get out of the bottom of the barrel next up the arc 12 blitzer increased shots per minute from 30 to 45 now placed in the energy weapons category and this is a nice buff i think it needs a lot more though because at the moment this gun is just trash it's it's just horrible next up r36 eruptor decreased number of max max from 12 to 6 explosion damage drops off slightly faster and this is honestly a huge nerf it's basically half of your magazine capacity is now gone and considering that the eruptor only has like five shots per mag giving it only six mags is a little bit of an overcorrection not only that but the explosive damage dropping off slightly faster means you will likely be able to kill less enemies even when they're bunched tightly together next up a bunch of energy weapon changes which will go through very quickly last 16 sickle decreased amount of magazines from six down to three which kind of makes sense i mean infinite ammo giving it less max i honestly rarely change the max for the sickle so i'm between fine with it and not fine with it we'll see how it is in game then the last scythe increased damage from 300 to 350 decreased max number of max from six down to four and i think this change was necessary because the scythe is horrible so hopefully this will bring it up and next up the long awaited changes to the railgun increased armor penetration in both safe and unsafe modes stagger force slightly reduced and i do not think this will be enough to bring it back to even 50% of what it used to be but hopefully it will at least become slightly useful. Then we have the MG-101 heavy machine gun, third person crosshair enabled, that's just something that makes sense so I'm glad it's here. Diligence counter sniper, damage increased from 128 to 140, ergonomics improved, I hope ergonomics improved means that when you target with the iron sights, you will actually be able to move your mouse and it will stay on target. Then we have the regular diligence where the damage got increased from 112 to 125. Eh, it's okay, it's not going to make any change for it, I think. The P19 Redeemer, slight increase in recoil. Finally, the Redeemer can get a nerf, at least in my opinion, it's deserved because everybody uses pretty much the Redeemer exclusively. Peacemaker, increased damage from 60 to 75. I am a Peacemaker enjoyer, so I will definitely try this out. Then Senator, increased damage from 150 to 175. And something huge, Speed Loader added when reloading on an empty cylinder, speeds up reload on empty considerably. And look, the Senator is actually a dope sidearm and finally it got the buff it deserved and maybe it will finally become top shelf. Then we have the dagger increased damage from 150 to 200 this was definitely necessary we'll see how it impacts the game we have the liberator damage increased from 55 to 60 meh i liberator concussive damage increased from 55 to 65 since this is an assault rifle most likely this will actually mean something so we'll see and then we have the dominator damage decreased from 300 down to 275 i think this was also kind of warranted because the dominator got way too op way too quick we have the guard dog rover damage decreased by 30 percent 
this I can understand, but I also cannot understand because mostly low level people pick up the guard dog rover since it makes the game easier for them and decreasing the damage for people who are just getting into the game is kind of like a double edged sword. I don't know how it will work out, but we'll see. Then we have the regular guard dog, slight increase in damage which the regular guard dog is very very trash and giving it just a slight bump in damage will absolutely not be enough. And then we have burning damage reduced by 15% which is just the chef's kiss moment because maybe finally the incinerator hoax will not be as annoying as they are in the game for the past couple of weeks. And then we have stratagems, the machine gun sentry has increased health to match other sentries, that's kind of cool but the machine gun sentry is kind of trash so eh, who cares. Tesla Tower increased health by 33%, again super trash, who cares, RL-77 Airburst Rocket Launcher, the Airburst Rocket Launcher will no longer detonate when shot near stratagems, HMG turrets, sentries, resupplies and other hell divers reduced proximity radius. And this is a change I was excited for since day one when we knew it was going to come out, which was pretty much yesterday when I dropped my video and now it's finally here, I cannot wait to get in game and use it even more. And then we have balancing changes to enemies, pile spewers and nursing spewers move speed slightly reduced, oh finally thank god these dudes were way too quick, hoax force required for them to stagger slightly increased, ah uh, that's a little bit of a punch in the gut, hoax scorcher direct flamethrower damage reduced by 20%, Hallelujah, thank you lord, finally, then we have devastator fire rate slightly increased only on the standard devastator, I feel like arrowhead studio just hates us, gunship sideways movement slightly increased, they hate us, they just hate us, scout strider raiders are now less vulnerable to explosions, oh my god why do y'all hate us bro? Fog generators health and armor increased, gunship spawners now have a much lower cap on how many gunships they can have active at the same time, which is a welcome change because if you are in a mission with a gunship spawner, oh my god you are likely to get surrounded. And I know I've been going really quick but I don't want to hold you for way too long so let's move on to enemy patrols. We unintendedly had non-linear scaling of the patrol spawns so they didn't spawn as often as they should have when less than 4 players were around. The intention is that one player has one fourth of the patrols compared to four players, but it used to be that way that they had one sixth. Balancing adjustment to patrol spawning. Patrol spawning has been increased when there are fewer than four players. The fewer the players, the bigger the change. For four player missions, there will be no change compared to before. The biggest noticeable change will be for solo players at higher difficulties. This again is a weird change for me because why would you punish solo players who try to play solo in this game that's clearly made for four people? I have zero idea, but okay. And then we have gameplay changes, made minor level generation improvements to how we distribute locations throughout the mission map. This should improve variation in distance between objectives and objectives will likely not spawn as far away from each other as often as before. Oh my god this sounds incredible, cannot wait to see it in game. Added setting in the options menu gameplay section to disable automatic climbing and vaulting while sprinting and the community's cries have finally been answered. The spread democracy mission otherwise known as raise the flag can now be enjoyed on higher difficulties for maximum freedom spreading that's freaking go spread democracy when readying up hell divers now salute to ensure maximum democratic readiness let's freaking go added ambience to the tremor planetary hazard to underline the severity so hell divers can react accordingly eh. I shots that ricochet from heavily armored enemies will now properly hit the hell diver who fired them. Trigger discipline is highly recommended. These guys just freaking hate us, bro. And you know what's weird? Spitz came out and said this patch is going to be mostly buffs. Bro, not only do our weapons get nerfed, 
We are getting nerfed and hammered on. Holy. And look, this is almost a 15 minute video. I'm sure you're not going to watch it up until here. But if you do, I'm not going to go through all of the fixes just because the video will turn out to be way too long. But basically, they fixed a bunch of crashes, a bunch of gameplay stuff, and even the numbers that show up for active Helldivers per sector or in the game are now live and they are working, which is freaking dope. I can see that some of the fonts have been changed. I'm not even sure if this is mentioned anywhere. I think it's mentioned that there have been fixes to UI elements and whatever, whatever. There's been pretty much like a laundry list of fixes and I have left that up on screen. If you're interested, you can just pause the video and check them out. But that was about it for the video, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel. What did you think about the patch? Make sure you tell me about it in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.